Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. Well, this is my DJI Mini 3 Pro review. Ta-da! Now, DJI released this little guy way back on May 10th, and DJI sent it out to all the reviewers who only review DJI products for the most part. So this channel reviews all drones, so I never qualify as a DJI fanboy to review their products. So I had to buy this with my own money, so I bought this baby with the integrated display and the Fly More kit over here, and eventually it was sent to me, and I received it at the end of May, early June, and I've been testing it since then and now it's time for my review. Now what makes my review different than other reviews you've probably seen is that, well, a lot of the reviews you've seen were from people who received this drone back in early May from DJI. It wasn't finished back then, so the drone they were reviewing and telling you about was an unfinished product. It's pretty much finished now, so the review you're gonna see here is an honest reality of what you're gonna get if you buy this drone. The second thing is that I'm only reviewing stuff that you, the viewer, asked for. So I made a post a while ago on the YouTube community forum, and I said, what would you like to see reviewed? And many of you sent me all types of ideas for review, and I actually followed them, and that's basically what this review is about, and this is part one of that review. Now, quickly, before I get into the meat of the review, let me answer some viewer mail questions. The first question is, should I buy this? Yes, it's a buy. If you have the money and you have the credit card ready to go, buy it. I'll tell you, it's a really good drone. There are some negatives. Well, I guess I should mention them here. But first, let me answer the second question. The second question, I'm looking at them over here, is, is this a professional drone? I don't know why people think DJI drones are professional. It could be because they labeled this the DJI Mini 3 Pro. But pro does not mean professional. It means prosumer. DJI realized a long time ago in the day of the DJI Phantom 3 that if they make many models, they have to call the top model something. So back then you had the DJI Phantom 3 Pro. Next one down, DJI Phantom 3 Advanced. Next one down, DJI Phantom 3 Basic, and so on and so forth. They did it as well with the Phantom 4. They had Phantom 4 Standard, Phantom 4 Pro. Then when it came to Mavics, they had the Mavic Pro, and then the Mavic Air. So Pro doesn't mean professional. Like a professional would be using this to do like the next Hollywood movie. Movie. If they did, you know, you'd have stuff like DJI Inspire Pro, DJI Inspire 2 Pro, or you'd have a lot of those other things. Mavic 3 Cine Pro, you know, it, it really, those are more pro than this. But uh, yeah, so this has the pro for prosumer. So, on to the next question. Oh, you're going to love this one. The DJI fanboys are not going to like me when I say this. So, the third question is, are there any negatives with this drone? I'm going to read them off right here, and I'm not going to get into it too much in this video, but some of it you're going to see here. First negative, focus. This camera does not have the ability to focus as well as something like the Nano Plus, the Evo Nano Plus by Autel. If you're focusing on something and then you walk in between what you're focusing on and the camera, it will not focus on you. There's no face detection, no human detection, anything like that. It just keeps focusing on the background. It's happened to me many times and on this tiny screen, half time your image is out of focus and you don't even know it. Number two, it overheats. If you put this on the ground on a hot sunny day and you don't fly fast enough, it will overheat and turn off and you have to wait till it cools off before you can fly. Same thing happens when you're flying. If it's really hot and you're tasking it and it's getting hot, if it starts to overheat, your range is limited because the VTX overheats. Brings me up to number three, which is the range. Using this controller, your range is kind of limited because there's no external antennas. Some people said they have range issues with the CE and the FCC. Sometimes you live in North America, United States or Canada, and it goes into CE mode and you have no range. It could be once again because it overheats and it reduces the VTX because that is the hottest part on this little baby. Number four is flight time. I took this out many times and flight time is okay, but don't hover for very long. When you hover, it really uses up the flight time on this. I have done hyperlapses and sometimes I can only get out two in a row and then it's out of battery power. So when you're doing a hyperlapse, that's a lot of hovering and it's trying to stay stable, especially if you don't have it moving and it sucks up the battery. You might only get like 19 minutes flight time when that happens. Number five, you're going to see in this review, it has no landing light on the bottom. Many other drones have a landing 
landing light and they have a landing light because all the sensors on this drone all require light. So when there's no light, they don't work. Number six, vertical mode. So the whole camera is horizontal and all they do is just like the old DJI Mavic Pro, the camera turns sideways and you can take photos and this one allows you to take video. And you can use all the functions you're gonna see it in this video, doing it in vertical mode if you wish. The only problem is on the app, they have the app so that when it goes into vertical mode on your screen, you get this tiny little sliver of an image because it's in vertical mode. They really need to speak with Autel and take a look at the Autel Evo Lite those guys have vertical mode down perfectly and it's a million times better than the vertical mode on this little baby. Number seven, the display on here, well, it's only 700 nits and when you're out in the bright sunlight, you really can't see anything. Now, for somebody like me who's been flying since the year 2013, I can look at these super tiny screens and I can make out enough to see what I need to see so it doesn't really hamper me. But I showed that screen to other people when I was out flying and they're like, I can't see anything. Like they thought there was no image on it. It's pretty black. But uh, if you're used to it, you'll get used to it. You can shade it and just put some shade and then it's okay. And number eight, well, it's a DJI drone. So it has DJI no fly zones. That means when you're flying, you are gonna get the notice that mm, you can't take off if you're in a no fly zone. That happened to me once I was out at my local beach a little too far close to an airport and it said, you can't take off. So I had to go to the other end of the beach to take off. So honestly, those are the only negatives I've noticed. Everything else is positive as far as I can tell. Maybe in future videos, I'll have other negatives, but that's it. And they're not showstoppers. I would still buy this drone. I am very happy with this little guy. So uh, this is my part one of my review. Check it out. <laughs>we go with my first low light test and I can tell you I was very impressed check this out you can see the moon up top now what's interesting is as I rise up into the sky the sky is not blown out the exposure does not change I can make out the definition on the ground and the definition in the sky and when I zoom in still looks great sure it's a digital zoom and digital zooms are not that great but DJI makes a smooth zoom so check this out smooth going in smooth coming out image looks great for social media like YouTube I'll do it again here here. You can see in low light it's very hard for a digital zoom to actually bring in any detail but it looks pretty good. Still see the detail in the sky and see the detail on the ground so I was quite impressed. Here we are filming the ground in low light. Now in low light, there's usually not enough light to bring out detail in the image. However, everything looks quite detailed to my eyes. So I think a lot of owners of this drone will be quite impressed and quite happy with filming in low light. Now here's something I found very interesting. Look at the sky and look at the ground. As I lower the drone, what should normally happen with most drones is the exposure should change. I have it on auto camera settings. So as objects come to the forefront, well, then the image should brighten. But look at the sky, everything stays the same. That is really good for a tiny little mini inexpensive drone like this with not a lot of pro settings. <laughs> Hey everyone, can you see me back here? It is evening. The sun has gone down, as you can see. I don't know, you can see over there, see the orange sky. The sun has gone down. I am lit up by a street light that's giving me this orange glow. Uh, there's a big activity going on over there, and that's where I'm gonna fly the Mini 3 Pro over to check out how good it is in low light. So this is my screen. Can you see it over here? <laughs> kind of small, eh? Anyways, I just want to mention that if you're if you're unaware, a drone like the Mini 3 it does not have a takeoff and landing light because it's only 250 grams, they couldn't add it. That means as well that the sensors on this drone that require light, they won't work. So there's no obstacle avoidance at night. There's no detection of any kind. It will kind of detect the ground with some sensors, barometers inside. But when I'm flying around, I'm kind of flying blind and just looking through my little display here, which looks like this. All right, let's go fly. Take off. Going up.
All right, I just want to show you me standing down here beside my Jeep. This is what it looks like. I look like I'm kind of lit up because there's a street light there. So however good this is recording, this is what you get at night. So let me uh, bring the camera up and show you the festivities. So straight through those trees is where all the excitement is happening. So let's go that way. Remember, I have no obstacle avoidance, so I can come pretty close to the tree. Woo! I almost hit it there. All right, so let's take it up so nobody sees or hears me because I don't want people to be, hey, there's a drone. But there we go. Look at this. Parking lot. The whole festivities. So this is the image you get. So I'm pointing at the lights that they have on the ground, which will give the brightest spot. If you look in the spots where there are no lights, you'll see noise. That's common in a small little sensor like on the Mini 3. So here I'll show you. If I go to the left here, look in the center of the field, you should start seeing it looks like ants or snow or whatever on the screen. That's just noise. You get that when there's low light. There is uh, noise reduction going on in this drone. DJI sticks it in all their drones and it's in this one. So it's trying to work its best at making night appear pretty good. So here we go. You can see looks pretty good to me. Let's go way up and look straight down. Here we are right above and I'm going way up. Maximum flight altitude. There we go. That's my maximum altitude I'm allowed to go in Canada. So you can see the lights on the side and the darkness in the center where you'll see some noise. Now, if I bring the camera up and look at the world, let's go this way pretty fast. There's a forest. And if we look out there, that should be pretty black. So you see any noise? How's that looking? You know, on my screen here, it looks really good. I can see the noise, but I can't see how bad it is. There is a road out there with cars on it. How's that look? Pretty good. There you go. That's, that's what it looks like at night on this little baby. And if I look this way, this is my town. You can see the school below and my little community with all the lights on out farther away. Let's take a photo of that. All right, our little guy's coming back and I put it on return to home. Let's see how close he comes back. He's right over here. I don't know if he's going to be even be in the camera. Ooh, I look like he's off to the side. I don't know if the cat, no, he's over there. He's over there. <laughs> oh, well, see it's nighttime and on my screen, because there's no light, I don't know if you can see this. It says, see on there, it says, make sure it doesn't know what it's landing on. It has no idea because the sensors don't work at night. So I have to make sure, even though it's on pavement, here I'll show you, it's right over here. I'll turn it this way. It's uh, right there. There we are. And uh, nothing under it, pretty smooth, so I'm gonna tell it, go on down, okay. It's all good. There we go. So I'll say, unfortunately, that's one of the things DJI should have added was a light at the bottom and taken something else off because the drone is kind of hit and miss at night. Although the camera looked like it was working well. All right, I'm out here in this field on a super windy day to answer your questions about the Mini 3 Pro. So I did ask previously to ask me what you'd like to see. And one was how well does it fly in the wind? It's pretty windy right now. We have wind gusts from 50 kilometers up to 70 kilometers per hour. Hopefully you can hear my voice going through the microphone. There's a lot of wind happening here. So the Mini 3 is over there and I'm going to pop it up in the wind and you'll see how it flies. It should fly fine. All drones fly fine in the wind. All it is is that if you're inexperienced, you may not realize that you never fly a drone in the wind if the drone doesn't have enough speed to fly in the wind. In other words, in plain English, what does that mean? That means check out what the forward speed on your drone is and then check out what the wind is. The forward speed of the drone should always be faster than what the wind is, or obviously, you know, logically, you're not gonna go anywhere. So there's a lot of YouTube reviewers that somehow forgot that when they tested out drones. Anyway, so for today, this little baby can handle the wind, I'm pretty sure. All right, let's turn it on and uh, take it on up in this wind. Here we go. See, it's pretty good. It hasn't flown back and hit me in the head yet, although I am moving back. Oh, it is bouncing backwards. So look where it is. And uh, it started over here uh, and it's going back there. Is it powerful enough to hold itself in place? Well, I'm looking at it sideways so you could see it. And uh, as long as it doesn't gust too much, 
So each time there's a wind gust, it will push it backwards. But overall, in strong winds, it's hanging out, it's doing well. And if you wanna see what strong winds bouncing around, what video looks like, let me just turn on the video here. There we go, if I bring the camera down on me, that is the Mini 3 in strong winds. It probably looks quite stable, even though all around it, it's anarchy. Here, let me, let me turn it around and you can see what I mean about anarchy. Look at the trees behind it here. Look at there, it's, it's crazy. I'll bring the camera up, look at it. The wind is just blowing back here. Everything's blowing, I'm blowing. So <laughs> it's pretty good. So I would say to answer that question, is it any good in the wind? Yeah. Let me answer another question many of you have asked me. How bright is the screen on this little remote down here? See this thing here? Well, the drone is on and this here controller is on and I have it on full brightness. Can you see anything? Can you see it on a bright sunny day? I'm waiting for the sun to come out and I'm gonna tell you right now, no, you can't. It's very hard to see. My cell phone, which is an iPhone 11 Pro Max is brighter than that screen. However, I've been flying for a long time, so I'm used to what I'm looking for and you can see enough to get by. But those little screens down, where am I? Come follow me. This little screen down here, you know, it's on right now. The sun is shining there. We got the sun out. Can you see it? These little screens are not designed for any type of pro photography. You can't, they're too tiny and they're not bright enough. You really need something very professional if you're gonna do pro photography, you know, like adjusting the white balance and all the colors and getting everything perfect. These will not cut it whatsoever. But on the Mini 3 Pro, who cares? It's a fun drone. It's just to take with you on vacation and everything else. Ooh, here comes that wind again. So uh, I answered that question, can you see this in the bright sunlight? Barely, you're gonna have to use some sort of shade over that because yeah, not, not, that, not that good. Okay, we're gonna try the active track through the trees and see if the avoidance system works. So I'll keep talking as I'm walking here. So the active track on this drone is really good in my opinion. It's as good as the Air 2S. And since it's a smaller form factor, I think it's slightly better than the Air 2S for the active track. It does have a pass and I do have it set to bypass objects. You have to set it up in the settings to make it go around objects. If not, if you select break, it will just stop every time it sees an object. On the screen, it's flat flashing different colors, telling me there's obstacles in the way. But you see how it goes around the trees and everything, no problem. So you can see there's a little hole up ahead in the forest and it's just gotta follow me through the forest without crashing into anything. It should like it better in the forest because it's not as windy in there. So uh, well, let's go. There's lots of little overhanging branches that could mess it up. And then I gotta send this thing in for repairs, but we'll see what happens. So it's going crazy now telling me there's obstacles. As long as I'm not moving fast, it should follow me because these little drones are designed to go walking speed uh, when there's lots of objects around. They can't think fast enough. The processor in them is, it's only so much you can fit in a little tiny drone so, and sell it for the price they sell it at. So anyways, it's following me around here. I'm not doing a thing. My hands are out here. If I hear a big crunch behind me, I'll know uh, it didn't work out. So, so far so good kind of dark in here, but there's no wind, which is good. So little branches like this, those are hard to see. Like all this stuff around here, it's going nuts. If I hold this close to my mic, listen to it. It's just going nuts. It's like it's ding, 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 because there's so many objects around. But this is the great thing with this drone and active track. So to answer the question that people asked me, is the active track on here really any good? Is the avoidance system any good? Well, you see for yourself, it's really good. You know, there's no doubts in that. DJI has a really good set of uh, programmers. They've got the algorithm in perfectly. They've got the lenses pointing forward at the right angle so that you don't crash into things and it knows to go around objects. Actually, you know, if I had to say what it's doing, it basically just sees where I go and then it tries to follow the same path because if I made it through, that means it can make it through too, the same thing. So that's pretty it. That's pretty much it. Tree up there. You know what? I didn't think I'd walk in this far, but we've come in quite a way. So oh, it followed me all the way. Oh, now I got to walk all back, all the way back to the car. Okay, let's try that. So let me just spin around here like this. Let's see what it's going to do. I'm going to turn around here and you see it at the hat cam. It's going backwards now. And uh, at some point it wants to get behind me. But uh, let's see, is it gonna be able to do it? Ooh, 
This is really testing it out. Oh, oh, there's a tree there. What's it gonna do? Over that tree, no problem. It's going up in the air. So going up in the air is not a good thing because up in the air, there's a lot of branches that it may not see. Did it finally figure out a spot to turn around? Oh, this should be interesting. Where's it gonna go? Where is it gonna go? Look at that. Does it still have me? Look at this. It's stuck behind all those branches. Oh my God, did you see that? <laughs> Holy cow, that was pretty impressive. There was no way I thought it was gonna get out of that. That's pretty good. You know, the best, the best drone on the planet for active track is the Skydio. Nothing beats the Skydio. You know, this, this doesn't even come close to the Skydio. However, for a drone of this size, which is really not designed for active track, it's more for filming. Ah, that's pretty darn decent, I'll tell you that much. So, uh, two thumbs up from me as I walk through the mud and almost slip and fall on my backside. Well, since we're still walking here, I'll answer another question a lot of people ask. They said, is it really portable? Take a look at this. My backpack has all my camera gear in it. I've got microphones, batteries, tripods, uh, bigger cameras, smaller cameras. I also throw this little camera in the backpack as well. It is quite portable and I just have to throw that little drone and this little screen and we're all good. Now that it's dark here, you might be able to see the screen on there. Can you see it? Can you see what it looks like? <laughs> Hang on here, I'll show it this way. Can you see the screen now? Looking at my GoPro here on my head. That's what it looks like as, I, as I'm walking here. There we go. Is it bright enough? I don't know. The angle? Does the GoPro pick up? If it's dark and not bright sunlight on your screen, then it looks really good. But ugh, out on a bright sunny day, it just goes pretty much black. All right, so for the end, let's just pick up speed here. And come on out as I'm limping through. And back out into the wind. All right, so the Mini 3 Pro is there and it does have a camera on the front that can spin vertically. And you have a little item on your screen at the top right here or well, halfway down on the right hand side that you touch it and you'll go vertical. There we go. So now I'm in vertical mode and I'm going to put the record on and it's going to record me in vertical mode and the video will be all vertical. All it's done, as you see, the camera, I don't know if you can really see it up front, the camera is now vertical. so. The whole image has gone from this way to this way. So you get 4K, just vertical. Anyways, this is more for social media. You can do a lot of the features. Uh, oh, I thought I had a tracking. Hang on a second. This is for social media. You can do a lot of the features you'd normally do uh, when it's in you know, horizontal mode because it really doesn't matter if it's in vertical mode. So uh, yeah, it's, if that's what you're into, it's pretty good. There's only one major problem with it, and that is that when DJI added that, it was kind of an afterthought, I think. You know why? I think somebody came up with the idea, let's do this, or we'll make it different than other drones on the market. But the problem is, if you look at my screen, can you see it on there? All I have is black on this side, black on this side, and a little strip in the center, which is the vertical video. It does not have the ability, when you turn this sideways, the screen does not flip, and I do not get a whole vertical image like this, and, and no way am I able to walk around and look at it like that. So I get a tiny little picture. That is unfortunately what you get on the Mini 3 Pro. DJI has not fixed the controller uh, so that it goes sideways. If you buy an Autel Evo Lite, they have a different system for vertical mode and it's a million times better than the DJI system because it's really good. As soon as you turn sideways, it just turns everything into vertical mode. It uses a different system, but it's much more applicable to people that would want to film in vertical. This is more like a gimmicky thing that you know some people will use that want to put their stuff on TikTok and all the social media sites and stuff like that. Now if you look at my screen record, uh, I'll show you right here, I still have the ability for all these settings. I could do master shots in vertical, I could take photos in vertical, I could do quick shots, hyperlapse, everything in vertical because it's just turning the camera sideways, that's it. So myself as a YouTuber who does YouTube reviews and everything, I have no need at this time for vertical mode. However, if I wanted to post my reviews and other things on social media to do quick short videos, you know, like even YouTube has the shorts, uh, then this here vertical mode is a bonus. Except that I'm stuck with vertical mode and I never have the horizontal mode to make a really good video. Okay, I'm gonna take it out of vertical mode and go back into lovely horizontal mode. 
Oh, and it's it's starting to rain a little bit now. And to answer the last question, or at least the last one at this point, uh, no, it's not waterproof. You cannot fly this in the rain. This drone has a VTX video transmission system in it that requires uh, an awful lot of cooling. That is why this drone overheats an awful lot. If I put this drone down on the ground and leave it turned on, it's going to overheat and shut itself off, and then you can't use it for a while. If you're flying and it's not super hot out, you can fly forever. But uh, because of that, there's a lot of holes in it to get the venting going. It's definitely not waterproof whatsoever. <laughs> Hey, back to me. So normally in any of my videos at this point, I would normally show you an unboxing. However, I do not want to put you to sleep with an unboxing at this point. So I'll show you an unboxing in future videos, maybe part two or part three or part four, you'll see the unboxing. And I'll show you some cool things with that with comparisons against the DJI Mini 2 and the Evo Nano Plus. You'll see that coming up in future videos with this little guy. So for now, all I'm going to say is I put links below where you can buy this product, uh, buy it off of Amazon, buy it off the DJI store, buy it off other stores i'll put some links below go check it out see if it's for you remember if you buy this it comes with one battery and if you buy the fly more kit well then you get more batteries in the charger plus this case on the front if that's something you need and a pile of propellers but uh, other than that uh, there's not much else to say so i'm gonna say bye now and we'll catch you in part two coming up sometime next week bye